Now, hopefully you've seen my first video on the Raspberry Pi camera, which covers what it is, how it connects to your Pi, and how to use the command line to capture some video and some stills. Today, we're going to look at how you can use it from within a programming language, and specifically from within Python. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, let's jump straight in here. I'm on a Raspberry Pi and we're going to be using the Thony Python IDE. So to get that, you go up to the Raspberry Pi start menu, programming, and then Thony Python IDE. Now I'm going to be showing you a range of programs that, today that go through from the very basics of how to capture uh, an image all the way up to how to do something like a streaming uh, webcam. So here we are, the most simple program that you can do. What is it? One, two, three, four. Uh, seven lines of code. First line important here, you need this to get the uh, Pi Camera support inside of Python from Pi Camera import Pi Camera, which is the interface that we're going to use. And then the second one here is just to import the sleep command. You notice here on line eight, we actually use that and we'll talk about that in a second. So very simple, you say camera, define a variable called camera, and it is of, uh, it creates this Pi Camera object for you. And then as you saw on the previous videos, my camera is set up in such a way that I need to rotate it 180 degrees. So camera.rotation is equal to 180, rotate it 180 degrees. We start a preview, which will bring up a window on the desktop here, showing what the camera sees. We will let that run for five seconds by pausing the program for five seconds, and then we'll turn the preview off. We haven't actually captured anything to a file. All we're doing is just switching the camera on, seeing what it sees, and switching it on again. Very, very simple. So let's just go up here and hit that play button and see what happens. So there you go, there is the preview coming up with a picture of a Dalek and my TARDIS, I mean, sorry, a TARDIS. And that was it, after five seconds, it disappears. Okay, that's the simple program. Oh, by the way, all these programs will be on my GitHub repository. And that was cam1.py. Let's go over to cam2. Okay, a little bit longer, but not very much. The first few lines you can see are exactly the same. We need to import the camera stuff, start the camera. I rotate it because of the way my camera is set up. Now, what we do here is we start a camera preview. Okay, then we say a loop here that will go around five times. We sleep to start with. That also helps on the first time around, let the camera settle down to get all the auto uh, brightness and everything set up. And then what we do is we say camera.capture. So here's the important thing, you use this uh, API to capture it, and what you provide is the file name. And if you notice what we're doing here is we're providing this percent %s, which is actually going to be i. So basically it will capture image one, image two, image three, image four, image five, dot .jpg in every single time. Once it's done that, it turns the preview off. So let's run that, and then we should have then five images captured on the desktop. Okay, so here it is running, and it's gonna take, of course, five times five, 25 seconds. We'll just jump now until when it has completed. Okay, so here we are on the desktop, and as you can see, image zero, image one, image two, image three, image four. I think I said one to five earlier, and of course it starts from zero, zero to four. And we'll just double click on one of them just to see what it is. There we go, a picture captured from the camera. And then each of these are the same thing, but five seconds apart. Okay, let's get a bit more sophisticated and let's record some video. Same thing, first setup is to just bring in the Pi camera stuff, start, initialize the camera, and then rather than capture, now what we do is we do start recording, and you give it the name of the file. It will record in .h264 by default. You might wanna call that .mp4 maybe, it's up to you. You then sleep for five seconds, which means the recording will go on for five seconds until finally we call camera.stop recording when it then stops. And finally we switch off the preview. So basically initialize the camera, start recording, wait five seconds, stop recording. Pretty simple. So let us just run that and then see what happens. Okay, that's finished. And as you can see here, there is that video file here on the desktop. Okay, I've got two more programs to show you. This first one shows you how you can capture an image and send it to a web server and update that image every five seconds. A bit more complicated. We're dealing with HTML, we're dealing with JavaScript, but we'll just go through it quickly. As I said, all the code will be available on my GitHub repository for you to study in more detail. So if you wanted to set up some kind of security camera, intrusion uh, detection, then this would be a great way to be able to see what's happening through the camera from a web browser. So what happens? The first thing is we uh, import the Pi camera again. 
Okay, and now these other two lines here are how you can use a build a web server in Python. We won't go too much into it. Python kind of makes it as easy as it possibly can, but we import those two for the web server. And then if you notice here from line five down to line 21 there, we've got this variable called page. Now, if you recognize all this, this is basically HTML and JavaScript. Very quickly, HTML tag, HTML head tag, the title, the Pi camera, uh, capture demo. Then we've got a bit of JavaScript. Now this JavaScript basically makes sure that every five seconds, a new uh, image is loaded into the web browser. And at the end here, a little trick that you might need to notice is that it uses this idea of asking for the uh, JPEG with the date at the end of it, and that includes the time. And that way, the JPEG it asks for is always a different one, which means it won't be cached. If you don't do that, then of course your web browser can say, oh, I've already got that image in my cache, and it won't give you the latest one. And then down here in the code, we see that on load of the body, it runs that JavaScript element. And basically we say, here is a, an image called still.jpg. There's its width and height. ID still, that's important for the uh, JavaScript. Okay, and then that's it. So it's just basically a bit of HTML that shows an image. Now we get down here into some more complicated stuff to do with building a web browser. Very quickly, what happens? If the uh, requested URL is just the root, then basically it redirects, that's 301, and asks you to go to index.html, okay? So if you just go to the address without uh, any anything else, it will in, redirect to index.html. If it is index.html, then basically it will take that page, look, there we go, page that we defined earlier on, make sure it's encoded in uh, UTF-8, and it will basically send it, so that, page up there with all that HTML tags and things will get sent as the response whenever you look for image, uh, sorry, index.html. And then finally, if it's looking for still.jpg, and notice it starts with here. And the reason for that is because afterwards we might have that date and time that we put on the end and we wanna make sure that it's this first bit is always the same. Then what it does is here's the, here's the magic. It goes into the Pi camera Okay, and it sets the rotation like I have to do because of the way my camera is set up. Basically, it does a capture, as we were doing earlier on, but not to a file, but actually to a buffer. And the way this, uh, because it's self, the way this works in Python is actually the buffer that is the web server. So basically, it says send out as a reply the data that I capture from the camera as the reply for the web server. And, and that's all it does. And then here at the beginning, it basically sets up the stuff for the web server, and it says, I want to start a web server on port 8000. So if you want to, you need to study that maybe in a bit more detail. It's a very quick way of looking at it, but bottom line, there's a web server. When it sees index.html, it sends out that variable that we defined at the very beginning here, at the top here, this page here. And when it sees still.jpg, it captures from the camera and writes that back out over the network. That's the simplest way to explain it study the code yourself in detail to really get to understand how it works. Okay, let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so here I have my web browser running and as you can see, it's capturing uh, the image from the web browser and this will update every five seconds. Now there's not much going on in my picture. So let me go and add an element to the picture now and we can see that it updates automatically. And there you go, a new picture has been captured and I've just stuck a uh, mobile phone in there covering up the uh, Dalek. So this will capture a new picture every five seconds. If you were looking out across your garden, maybe you know trying to capture foxes or cats or dogs coming into your garden or, or whatever you wanted to see, then this will update every five seconds and you can see what's going on. Now the final example builds on that first example we did, but now rather than updating the picture every five seconds, we're actually gonna send video as an MJPEG video stream through to the web browser. So very similar thing. We have the page here at the beginning, which is our HTML. We don't need the JavaScript now because this is gonna be streaming always. And we're, the file we're looking for is no longer a still, but it's an MJPEG file, which is basically a sequence of uh, MP, uh, JPEG files one after the other. Very similar stuff here inside of the 
uh, the web browser, except for it's a bit more tricky here that we have this writing of stuff because we're sending a video file. This is all to do with uh, the frames, how they're formatted inside of the video. Won't go too much into it. You can look at it yourself, but this is a write function that basically knows how to send those frames out over the network. Similar stuff here as we had before, when you're just looking for the uh, root without any uh, HTML file, index.html. And then finally, now we're gonna, when you ask for stream.mjpeg, it will do the magic. And again, what it does here, goes into the camera and it starts to write out uh, the different images one at a time in a stream of uh, JPEG pictures, which is the uh, mjpeg. Now notice this is talking about a variable called output. We'll see where that comes from now here at the bottom. At the initialization, it sets up the camera. Again, it does the rotation and it says output is a streaming output. Okay, and then it starts to record from the camera. And where is it putting that? Well, it's putting that in output. So output is a streaming output. And then when you go into the web uh, browser server that we've built, it takes what's in that streaming output and streams it out across the network. Again, this is to do with how you build HTTP servers, web servers in Python, again, at the address uh, 8000. And when it finally finishes, you stop recording. So you start recording and basically just send everything that comes with the camera out down that uh, streaming uh, MPEG. Okay, let's uh, run that and test it as well. Okay, so there you go. So I'll go into the image now and you can see that it's actually a video stream. Okay, so there you have it. It's five simple programs on how you can use the Raspberry Pi camera. There is some great documentation on the Pi camera, which uh, gives you all of the basic recipes and advanced recipes and how you access all the different APIs. I'll leave a link to all that documentation in the uh, description below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And we're all at the mercy of the YouTube recommendation algorithm. So the best way to make sure that you know that I have dropped a video is to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.